Hello, I'm Linda Ann, and this is my fourth contribution for CAC Fantasy Art, the Art Crawl event. Uh, I drew a little bunny. I hope that you can see it here. It's very light. I always draw intentionally light when I'm going to watercolor it over it. I'm pretty sure that the oval that I drew to match the picture frame shows up pretty well, but I'm not sure that you can really tell what the bunny looks like on this uh, video. Anyway, here's another eraser that I sometimes use. It is a white eraser. And I'm going to just take up some of the pencil markings that I can see, even though you may not be able to. I'm going to take up some of them because I don't. I want this to be extremely light because this is going to be a fairly uh, soft watercolor. I like this white eraser because it doesn't leave any marks at all on my page when I'm finished. Uh, this is Art Masking Fluid, and uh, I'm going to use that to block out some of the areas that I don't want to get paint on. You probably can't see it in the picture again, but this little bunny is a fantasy bunny, and he has wings, so I'm going to block that out. And sometimes you'll find, like in the lid, you'll find little pieces of uh, the masking that is dried up and rubbery, so always get rid of those. I'm using an old paintbrush that I don't care if I throw away when I finish because this is really, really hard on paintbrushes. So always use a very inexpensive paintbrush or a disposable one. And I'm just going around his wings. I'll go around them at the top and at the bottom. You can buy masking fluid in some different colors and different brands, but I like this one. It, uh, I'm able to see it once I get it on the page and know that it's there because uh, some of it's kind of hard to see. It depends on what background you're using, but I want to know that I have the right areas covered. So that has to dry before I do any paint near it, and I'm, I try my frame. I will be doing that all the way through uh, doing this watercolor because I think this is probably going to end up being the one that I like the best. I just love little bunnies, and it reminds me of the little white bunny that I had when I was a child. So Lucky Apple is this color and uh, I'm using it very, very watery. It's a greenish yellow color. So that's what I'm doing. It almost looks like the wings up there. It almost looks the same color as the wings in the video. The next thing I'll go to is olive vine, and I'm going to use that while this is still wet to kind of uh, anchor my little bunny to the ground. I know he has wings, but he's on the ground right now running towards us. So this gives a little variegation in the grass. And I squirted just a little water on and I dab it off if I think that I got it someplace I don't want it to go. I'm going all the way around now up over the top of his wings and down to the grass because I'm going to use some Bolivian Blue and I'm mixing it with just a little bit of that uh, uh, Lucky Apple and that's going to become my sky. Pay close attention that you don't put your horizon line right in the center. Anytime you put a horizon line in the center it cuts your picture half in two and it's hard to come up with a good composition if you do that. I did, this is still wet on both sides, but I'm going in and making sure that, that uh, it's extra wet before I add the pigment. And I'm just adding a little bit of pigment to this at a time because I don't want to go too heavy on this watercolor. I'm also paying closer attention to the fact that my colors will match my frame just a little bit better. I expect my frame to be brighter but uh, I, I want to make sure that they are compatible. I dried that just now uh, with my heat gun so that I can go to the next layer of colors. 
this has uh, more of the paint on it than I showed, so I must have lost some of the fit footage somewhere. But I took a little Bougainvillea Twinkling H2O's and mixed it with a little bit of pink azalea and blocked him in, his body parts there. Now you can see where the face will be and that the body's coming toward you. And that's kind of a, it ended up being kind of a lavender pinkish color. Now I'm using the point of my compass to scratch in some lines to represent grass, but I'm not sure that it's going to work on this particular paper. I've had luck with it on other papers, but it doesn't look like this one's going to work. So I mix up a little uh, moss green with a little bit of that lucky apple, and everything I'm doing is very watery. Lots more water than pigment. And when I put it in, I really can't see those lines too well. I thought they would show up better than this, but I can approach that a different way. So even though this is an oval, I'm going ahead and painting all the way out to the tape on both sides. Should I decide to put it in a square frame later, what I will do to it is um, go back and make the colors outside of that oval stronger so that it looks like I have a little vignette of my bunny. And I've put in little marks for his eyes, a little mark for his nose, kind of accented his ears a little bit so that they look like they're in shadow. If you think that you've put a paint on that uh, you don't like or you want to soften someplace, do that fairly immediately. Like right up there on the side of that little face. I wanted it to look a little bit shadowed, but I didn't want it to be harsh. To remove the masking from the wings, you can just start with an eraser and it will pull right up. You can just lift it off. It's very important to replace the cap on your masking. I didn't say that earlier, but uh, it dries. When it dries, it makes strings, and it doesn't have a very good shelf life if you don't keep the lid on it. I'm going to do just a little outlining with this rose petal color. And then I come back with water and more water and more water to fade out the colors because I don't want a harsh line. I am so aware that we are all our own worst critics, but sometimes m my um, critiques, my self-critiques, are constructive criticism. And if I were doing this again, that's, that's how I always look at everything I paint. If I were doing this again, what would I do differently? Well, what I would do differently is I would go ahead and extend those wings way out to the sides, but they wouldn't fit into the oval if I'd done it that way. But I would make them much, much longer so it didn't look like part of his ears. Now I'm going in with some pink azalea and just giving some dots, and some of those dots are landing in some wet places, and that uh, brings out a little more color because I want the bunny super soft, but... I want this to blend in with the frame. Okay, it's experiment time and I brought in my embossed pen from Ranger and I'm just going to draw and dot and try to texture these wings a bit with it. When I get all through on both sides, both wings, both under the ear and on top of the ears on both sides, then I will uh, sprinkle some embossing powder over this. And I just recently discovered embossing pens and embossing powder. To when we did embossing in college, way back when the dinosaurs lived, uh, embossing paper meant uh, putting a bone tool down on top of some cardboard or some impressions that you made and pushing that bone tool to give impressions in the paper. But embossing means a lot of different things today. So I sprinkled that. That is an iridescent embossing powder and it's pretty just like it is, but it gets prettier when you melt it. Now I'm taking a brush because you see some of it stuck to the edges. I don't know if that's because I didn't uh, use my little 
tool to keep it from sticking or if it's because the watercolor was just slightly damp there perhaps. But I'm going to go back and and fill in some more lines where I think there should be a little more of this iridescent powder. And I'm going to hit it again and shake that off. This can be put, if you shake it onto another piece of paper, you can put it right back into the bottle easily. And then I'm brushing off any of the excess. And I will heat it with my embossing tool and watch the magic happen. Here's the powder that I used. It's embossing powder. Um, and now I'm going to use this Princess Gold. And I'm going to go back with my pen and go in between places and around places where the uh, where I didn't use the iridescent. I'm actually outlining this time. I've decided I don't care if it's soft. I want to bring these wings out more. That would be probably kind of the center of interest along with his little face so that your eye would go there immediately. So you sprinkle the gold on and this is really magic because it changes more. This looks like a brown powder when you first begin but when you hit it with that heat gun it's just like magic just turns into little has the Midas touch turns into little gold golden lines. I see a little of that brown powder so I'm going to take a soft brush and get rid of that before I heat it because if you heat first and I almost did but if you heat first then it's going to stick to your paper out there and I really don't want the gold too much outside of the wings. And like I said this is an experiment but see how pretty that is when the gold when the little brown powder turns into the gold and when it heats up, it just kind of travels in a line. It's real interesting to watch. Just in case you're wondering, I'm going to finish those eyes later, but I'm still playing with the wings. And I decided to make it look like the sky is kind of coming through these wings, like they're a, a little bit iridescent, or, or a little bit, not iridescent, but transparent. I'm putting that same sky color into the wings, and if it doesn't look like it's transparent, that's fine. It's a, it's a nice touch. So I'm going to play with that blue. And then I'm going to come back with a little more when that dries. Get it just a little darker. One of the nice properties of this is that the embossing powder resists uh, the watercolor that I put on it. So it's only going into the background. It's not going to cover that. I decided to bring out my artist pen, my Pigma artist pen, and try adding a few lines here and there to um, enhance it. And now I'm working on the eyes. I looked at several bunny eyes on the internet before I did this and I used to have bunnies, but I noticed that I remember that I had a, a bunny with pink eyes, but I saw this bunny on the internet with great big black eyes and just a tiny bit of a highlight on one side, and I thought that they looked so cool. So that's what I want this bunny to have. And at some point, I kind of bump outside the line, so I go back and make the other eye a little bit bigger. But here he is. There's his little wings. I'm still going to go around them a, a bit. Not with solid lines, but kind of broken lines. And I think I'm finished. Check the comments in the description box below because I have a group on Facebook, an art group, and I would love to have you come and join us. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, comment, and share on your social uh, media. Now I'll give some close-ups of him here so you can see and look at the way he looks in the frame. And I'm pretty happy with this one. I think this might rate a little on top of the uh, 
fairy house. I think this is it. You know, I was editing this video when I realized most of my bunnies had little whiskers, and I'm going to have to go back and put in some whiskers for this little baby. Thank you so much for watching.